Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and today we're taking your health back, streaming live from our studios of ThinkTech Hawaii in downtown Honolulu and from my home office in Makiki. Today, I'd love to introduce to you a couple that has been married for 41 years, has two daughters and seven grandchildren. They also both have successful careers and want a better Hawaii for all. Let me introduce to you Kim and Gary Cordery. Welcome. Thank you, Wendy. Aloha, Wendy. Aloha. Nice to meet you. <laughs> All righty. So let's get started. We're going to start with you, Kim. So, Kim, can you tell us what is an esthetician? An esthetician is um, basically somebody who takes care of skin. So, um, different than dermatology, it's not a medical procedure, but an, an esthetician actually has um, does a little bit more cosmetic and from the root word aesthetics actually is all about beauty. So the, um, what I do is I work on the skin. So it's everything from cleaning the skin and making the skin look fresh and bright and renewed, restored, and um, also fighting age, <laughs> which wow. is a, a huge proponent, right? Right. Wow. So that's why you always look so good, right? You know what to do and how to do it. And so do you, um, work on yourself as well? Uh, well, it's, I do actually use wonderful products. The products that I use are from, they're actually made in Paris, France. And so that is definitely something that I am really proud of that I carry. And I love the product, amazing product. Wow. Um, and the product name is Yonka. And, but no, to actually do a facial on myself that, you know, That's pretty it's, hard, right? Yeah, I mean, you can do the cleansing for sure, wow. but and the upkeep with the products and whatnot. But so is that, the is that where Gary comes in? Gary does it for you. <laughs> that was just a joke. Sorry, sorry, Jim. <laughs> so I wanted to ask you, what are the benefits from receiving a facial? Oh, well, there's so many. Um, honestly, it's everywhere. Everything from the beauty aspect where your skin, it looks renewed and restored, refreshed, like I just mentioned. But also a facial, the facial that I do, actually, I do a lot of massage. So it also has a lot of relaxation involved. So as we know, with our stressful um, times that we live in, it is something that we need in our lives. We, too many people work very difficult, long days, and don't take enough time for loving on themselves. So that's right what I on, do. You, is I, right, you hit the right there on the, on the nail, man. You hit it right there. People don't take enough time to take care of themselves. And when yes. they come to you, I know that some of them come initially feeling guilty, but actually they need to take care of themselves first and foremost. And that's Absolutely. how I know they take on the world. That's the secret to a lot of our, our, our success is that we need to take care of us. And by visiting with you, you allow them that time and you really get into the root of what's going on and having that time to talk story with you. But I want to ask you, what is the most rewarding aspect of your work? Well, probably what you just mentioned, just the fact of being with people. I love people and I love to just hear um, their lives and, and the things that go on for them in their daily lives and just to give them the opportunity to just relax and to just soak. You know, we don't take enough time to actually um, care for ourselves, like I said earlier, but what I love is I, I love when it's such a reward for that person and they're actually able to relax. Sometimes clients fall asleep on my table and, you know, they say that's the best compliment. Yes. <laughs> I know yes. Gary, when I do Gary, he always falls asleep. <laughs> Wow. I think I could probably just sit on the side and he would be sleeping. But um, <laughs> honestly, it's it's really uh, such a reward when people get up and they're just so relaxed. They don't they actually don't want to get off the table because they're for just sure. relaxation. For so. sure. Wow. Thank you for sharing. And you you hit it right on the nail, Kim. People need to take time to take care of themselves and take their health back. And that's what we're all about, right? That's yes. the secret to a lot of success there. So let's turn to Gary now. So Gary, please share with us a little bit about what is your career? Well, my first career is getting facials from my wife. <laughs> you lucky man. If you could do that for a full-time career, we would be a happy camper, I can tell you that. It's such a treasure. I can tell you, you know, just a, a, Kim's amazing. I, 
you know, my career, career as a, as a husband and as a father, that's primary. You mentioned in your, in the opening that we've been married 41 years and we have beautiful kids and grandkids and really, I don't know how you articulate what is a career, but for me, that's the most important and rewarding part of life. From there, you know, I make a living. I, I work, I work as a contractor, kingdom builders here in Hawaii. And not, and before that, since uh, 1979, I've been in construction. Started with a pick and shovel. It's one of those stories where you start with pick and shovel and you work hard and, and uh, doors are open and you step through them. And it's, it's been uh, an amazing blessing in our lives that we've been able to, to uh, uh, you know, we just lived a, such an abundant life and working hard as a part of that and just keeping your word and your promise and doing what's right and honoring, honoring God with your finances and loving your neighbor. So these are all part of a successful business. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a joy. It, you know, it's coming to a close here in November. Uh, November, we'll have a new job, new job. Yes. Uh, I understand that. That's, that's exciting, that's right? So, right? Yeah. There's change in the wind. There is change, and change is good. Yeah. So I know, I know that your career is having a change or a shift. And uh, I heard that you're running for governor for the governor's office, and that's a big undertaking. So then, just ask uh, directly, what prompted you, Gary, to make this decision to run? So that's a really good question. You know, over the last, uh, well, actually, our kids left Hawaii four years ago. It was really hard for Kim and I. Uh, born and raised here and all of our grandkids born here but ultimately they left they could see that that uh, making a living here was becoming more and more difficult and then over the last couple of years most of us here in hawaii have really experienced difficult times with the government closing opportunities for people to thrive and to live in abundance and implementing rules and regulations and it it became clear that something needed to be done for the, to stand for the people's liberty and, and so we started this aloha freedom coalition really a stand for liberty but during that process People began to say, hey, you should run. You, you should be running for office. And I, I really, I just dismissed this outright. This is fantasy. I had, you know, I'm not a politician, but, I, but I, I kept hearing these people saying these things. And, and uh, then I honestly, I started having these experiences with the Lord. They were profound. Uh, none like I've had before. And, and uh, you know, I've been a, a believer for 40 years or more than 40 years. And these experiences were profound and they were powerful. And, and I, I finally came to the conclusion uh, that they were related to these comments that were being made from people I didn't even know. Right. And ultimately I said, okay, Lord, if this is what you're saying, we're going to run for governor, then we're going to run for governor. And Kim affirmed it with uh, a conversation we had and off to the races. Well, here we go. Oh, here we go. So well, I'm <laughs> going to ask Kim, Kim, you know, when your husband came to you and said, honey, um, I, the Lord spoke to me and said, you are to serve and as governor for the state of Hawaii. Honestly, Kim, what were your thoughts of Gary's new career journey? Honestly, I was waiting for it. I, I really felt that that was what God was saying. So I, I knew. And um, it was just a matter of him having to work it out with the Lord because he, that, he's got the bigger call. I mean, I'm just, you know, supporting, supporting role. Yeah. And so, yeah, for, for me, I, I was I felt that yes, it was it was the call of God. So, so, so it was all I, in. Need, I, I need to correct you there. Uh, not that Gary had the bigger part in this, because it's equally you guys are equally you. You when Gary said yes and you affirmed and confirmed it, you have as big a role. And whether you know that or not, your role is as big <laughs> as That's Gary's right. role. And so never underestimate that or never say that because your role is superbly great and you're going to influence your husband's decision so yeah. much for the people of Hawaii. So I appreciate you. you both for saying yes, jointly and with the right heart and with the Lord guiding every answer that you said yes to. So thank you. So back to Gary, how is the health of a state influenced by a governor's office since you want to run for governor? The, uh, wow, uh, great question. Uh, health of a state. You know, the governor in his authority, in particular in Hawaii, the governor has such great authority more than any other governor in the nation. People will be shocked to understand the authority that the governor has. This authority actually equips him and empowers him to make changes and to make adjustments in the way public health is actually, uh, the policy of public health is executed in Hawaii. Uh, you know, the governor gets to nominate the director of health, the, the deputy directors, and that health department really in, really enacts all health policy, not just the medical piece, but all kinds of uh, health policies, clean water, clean air, homelessness, uh, anxiety, 
uh, you know, depression, these kinds of decisions, they really are the nuts and bolts of a public's general health. So by, by the, uh, the ability to nominate these, uh, these directors and these deputy directors, if we put thoughtful people in place, this is, this is what we'll do, thoughtful people who actually consider the, the humanity of the individual and create policy that's based on their needs rather than based on a protocol or a program or, or what the state can afford or that kind of thing. There must be wisdom and the application of, of sincere uh, policy directed at the entire state's health, which includes small business. I mean, you think about the ramifications of those kinds of policies that we've seen over the last couple of years. And so I look forward to working with really people who have a heart for people, who understand their roles as servants. And so this is a great opportunity for the people. Wow, Gary, when I hear you speak, I hear your heart speaking. And that's um, so refreshing, so refreshing and so raw and so real. So I'm like, when I first heard you speak and I felt that, I said, you know what, you have to come on the show so others can hear your heart behind what plans you want to implement and how you want to make Hawaii great again. So let's keep on going here with this, Gary. So thank you. Um, I also need to ask you, what are the changes you are planning that will impact the health of Hawaii? The changes, oh wow, you know, the changes that the governor can really do is he can really start to look at the way these policies actually are fashioned, and how, they, how they actually uh, uh, implement or impact people's lives. I was just talking to a physician just the other day and she was, talk, she was telling me about how difficult it is for a, for a physician that's not a part of the Queens program to actually make a living. The idea of Texas taxes and regulations and fees that are constraining the doctor-patient relationship need to change. I remember the day when you went to the doctor and they would sit with you and talk to you about what's actually wrong. And then they would actually evaluate your condition and make recommendations based on your specific needs. Now, much of our public health policy through the medical field is done through protocols. They just run the people through, through a, a set of programs based on what the insurance will pay. These kinds of policies, are, are, they're not actually people-generated policies. They're corporate policies. And so we must bring back to Hawaii the liberty and the freedom for, for family uh, musicians, physicians to, to operate in their gift, that Hippocratical oath to operate and to serve the people is what we really long for as a society. We, we, we do not need a, a protocol generated by a health organization or an insurance uh, industry telling us how to take care of our lives. We must have uh, the humanity piece back in medicine. And so some of the changes that we'll make, we'll be opening up those opportunities. We'll be looking for ways to decentralize the way medicine is, is implemented here. We'll be looking for ways for the state to actually provide for the people to have access to medical care. In particular, the Kapuna. We are, we are lacking in our state with Kapuna care. We have a shortage of doctors. It's almost a crisis point. And these, these actually are policy driven. People don't think that this necessarily policy that creates these shortages, but it is by a bad policy. And so we'll, we'll look at all of these avenues to create more doctors, more care, greater access, more personalized care, and really care that will sustain the health of people, not, not of organizations. Wow, oh, exactly. You know, you hit everything on the nail again. You know, we've, um, we're not even a diagnosis, we are code. That's, That's why coding is such a big um, uh, program these days teaching the kids coding because everything we're all a code something is wrong it's a code it's not oh wendy has a headache wendy has blah 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 code right. number and so it's not personal anymore because it's just either this or that and you've got to fit in that box for them to diagnose and that's so wrong and also the, the fact that you spoke on kupuna care kupuna care especially on the outer islands is so lacking and um that it's so sad to see the kupuna and the lack of care that they receive on the outer islands. And um, I'm sure that you're going to be addressing that situation as well when, right. uh, when, uh, when allowed to do so as our next governor. Is that correct? That's correct. You know, uh, uh, Wendy, you, we sat on, uh, had lunch with a lady in Molokai, an elderly lady, and she's scared to death that she's going to get sick. Not only is there no Kapuna care, but there's very limited access for them to come to Maui if it's minor or come to Honolulu if it's a major issue. These people are living in fear. Many of these, our Kapuna are up in, in apartment buildings and condominiums. They have no care. They have no access. 
there's no conversation at the Department of Health about how to reach these people. And I talked to caregivers, private caregivers who long for the support from the state to actually be the gift that they are. And this is what needs to be done. These people, they just want to be, they just want another human being to talk to them and to walk them through what it means to eat healthy, to exercise. The, the fact that this is not a component in our healthcare system, that, we don't, that we're not emphasizing uh, good health and eating habits, exercise programs, now we just medicate. We don't, we don't actually bring help to the people. We just medicate them and push them through the line. We pass them through. This is not healthcare. We need healthcare that serves the people, starting with the foundational piece of, of uh, you know, good produce and good protein and, and health and exercise. And that's what, that's what we long for. And that's what I'm, that's what I'm about. Wow. And it's, um, of course, you and Kim make the same, same decisions and same thoughts because Kim and I were having a conversation as we were preparing for this program. And we were talking, Kim, about self-care programs, right? And not waiting mm -hmm. for government to tell us what to do. But I think what, what I hear Gary saying is that implementing, and also from you, Kim, implementing more self-care programs so that people will take it upon themselves to know that we have to steward our temple the best that we can and not wait for anyone else. But to get encouragement from the government, that would be um, a sure kickstart to any program that we would like to have um, carried out here in the state of Hawaii. Is that correct, Kim? Yeah, I, th I think what's amazing is just having the conversation, letting people even think about health outside of pharmaceutical, you know, that the eating, the healthy eating, the exercising and taking time for ourselves. You know, that is what is, um, there's people that are suffering as a result of being alone and being um, sidelined during, during this whole last two years, especially. And so they, they need that. They need not only somebody to love on them, but to actually, to, to actually have self-respect so they receive that care, you know? Exactly. And, you know, um, being the next governor for the next four years, um, Gary, it's a big job. Uh, I would say even a bigger job than usual, because we have to undo the damage yes. of the last couple of years. And I'm sure you're aware of that, right? That all yep. what we went through mentally, you know, spiritually, emotionally, that right there, we have to heal. We have to heal our people in order to be productive and prosperous in the upcoming years. So yeah, that is yeah. a big, big job. And um, I know many people are struggling with anxiety and depression in Hawaii. Is there, is there hope for Hawaii's people, Gary? You know, uh, of all the questions that you could possibly ask, Wendy, that's the one that's most important. The one that people long for more than any other thing is they hope for, they have a hope for the future. Everybody can see what's not working, but rarely do people see what's possible. And this is really part of the vision of our campaign for governor is to create hope again for the people. There is a pathway forward. We are not stuck in the past. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. This is what we can do as a, as, from the office of the governor and the lieutenant governor and, and others who want to serve in a way that supports the people. We're offering hope because even though government has been stuck and people have had no access to actual care, not just, not just in the medical field, but essentially across the board, the people long for a responsive government. The idea that the government is supposed to serve and work for the people is, should be a reality. We're going to change the nature of the way that people interact with government. We're going to actually create access for the people at the deputy director levels within the departments. This is a, this is a major shift, a paradigm shift for the people of Hawaii. They no longer will have to call a, a, a legislator, a, a representative or a senator and say, hey, can you fix my road and this and that? because they, they're not actually about that. They're about executing and distributing funds. The departments are the way, is the area where policy is made. So we wanna create department level access so that when, the, when there's common sense solutions for the people of Hawaii, they come right into the policy makers. They don't wait for the next legislative session. We long for access uh, to government that they'd be responsible for the needs. So we look forward, I can tell you, we look forward to taking down that wall around the square house you know, the one, that beautifully painted wall has been there for years now. We're going to take that down and because that wall represents separation from people, from their government. And I long for, and I know hundreds of contractors just like me that want to back their truck up and take down the wall 
So it's, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of a new beginning. And that's what we long for as a people. Hope, hope, for your, hope that your kids don't have to leave. Hope that there's a job when they get out of school. Hope that there's legacy properties they can afford to shop and eat and buy a home. There's hope for all of these things. And uh, that hope is on its way. So I, I love the question, Wendy. You're amazing. Yeah, thank you for that uh, very honest and clear answer. So I have a question from a viewer. Okay. And uh, they want to know, Hawaii has been in the dark about so many issues. Mm -hmm. Everything like exactly what you said, behind the wall. That's Everything right. is um, hidden from us. The issues, whether they're remedying the situation or they just cover it up or it's fixed. We don't know. So how can you shed light on all this darkness? Well, one of the primary things that we'll start initially as soon as we take office is we'll begin to reveal and re bring transparency back to government. The people should know exactly where their taxes go. They should not be a mystery. There should be an accounting for the spending of the people's money. And when not, not just an accounting for the money, but who's actually making these decisions. How come bills go into the back room and they come out a different bill? And they're, when we're all of a sudden spending 100 million extra dollars that we never thought about. This is bad policy. And this is corruption. I'm just going to be straight. Corruption must end in the state of Hawaii. It's undermining the liberties of the people. So we were, we're going to illuminate everything. We're also going to bring in uh, uh, people who will actually investigate corruption, money mismanaged. That's what corruption is. Whether you're constraining a business from being successful or opening a door for a development that shouldn't have been opened on both sides of the coin, whether it's access or constraint, bad policy is undermining the hope of the people. So that, that caller, you, she, she or he, they represent the voice of hundreds of thousands of people in Hawaii. And we're, we're just saying, come out and vote. Bring, bring change to your government. This is what we need. If people actually will say, yes, enough of this backroom politicking, the same old boy network, it must come to a close so that there can be a new beginning, hope for the future. You know, um, I have another question. So. Hawaii is, I was a small business owner for 20 plus years. And I know I hear from all my colleagues, um, other small businesses, Hawaii's climate and attitude for small businesses is not the most positive. <laughs> How can you make it better for the mom and pops, the people like me um, to have better success rate here in the state of Hawaii? <laughs> That's an understatement. Uh, <laughs> so Hawaii being a, a business friendly environment, you know, there's, there's numerous national studies that ranks that ranks that rates Hawaii as one of the worst states for small business. The fact that we have these unnecessary fees and taxes, they're not part of your 11% that we pay as a citizen, your state income tax rate. They're actually, they're in these departments. The departments have been, have been empowered to raise fees and, and execute reg, uh, regulations without, without people knowing it. They just do it. So these fees and regulations, they must be removed. Government's actual job, I believe government's job is to create a safe place, place of justice, of equal justice across the board, of equity for all the people, of equal access for, of government for all the people, and then just step back and let the people thrive. No, no longer should the government be deciding winners and losers. You remember the words, it's essential and non-essential as though the person who works in a restaurant is any more essential than a person who's at the emergency care. That is not true. This idea that there is a tear between the elite and the uh, quote, normal folks, this is everything that's wrong. And this language in and of itself represents everything that's wrong. We need, we need equality, not based on performance, but based on integrity and honor. Yeah, you know, I've come to really dislike that word essential. Whether uh, was in that category or not, it didn't matter. It was just that it was a division of a, a bad right. division of a word using that word, and it didn't it didn't make sense to me at all. No. And I don't like that word. But um, you know, um, from being a chocolate maker, the Lord has me now growing and being a farmer, and so I grow a lot of my vegetables, and um, I've always tried to promote sustainability, mm. um, and farming and just having a better quality of food for our people. Everyone comes to Hawaii, they say, well, Hawaii is a, it has the best growing weather all year round. You guys must produce a lot of your food. And I look at them with a big question mark and they said, 
you don't. So yeah. can you address that issue, Gary? Yeah, you know, another issue that faces the people of Hawaii. Where, yeah. where did ag go? Where did dairy and, and poultry and beef, where did it go? Why, why did we trade the local farmer for a Costco? This is a baffling question nobody can answer. Hawaii used to be an a agricultural giant yeah. uh, through bad policy and actually squeezing the farmer out has made for a, 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 a state that's dependent on Matson. We should have, as you described, Wendy, we should have local farmers and entrepreneurs who, who, who bring produce to the forefront and, and our schools are full of fresh grown produce that our stores are lined with beautiful fruit and vegetables and beef and poultry. And, and uh, you know, I love those brown eggs. I just love them because they came from somebody's farm in my backyard. The, you know, the idea, uh, maybe they come from the mainland too. I, I honestly, Kim shops, does most of the shopping, to be honest. But <laughs> nevertheless, the point is when you walk into Safeway and you see such a great display of food, food and it looks so marvelous until you come to the realization that none of it comes from Hawaii. This is a travesty. And the fact that we have no industry, no poultry, remember, I can remember dairy, I can remember meadow gold, I can remember these things. The fact that we don't have them is bad policy. This is DLNR gone amok. This is exactly the kinds of things that the governor can change. He can, re, he can reappoint and redirect policy at the DLNR and make space for the local farmer, for the local industry to come back into the marketplace and thrive and be a profitable business. So. Wendy, great question. Um, important questions that your callers had, and what a what a joy to be on with my bride. What a, amazing! What a great day. I know. Look at you. You look so happy, and even after forty one plus years, two shades right. for you both, man. So I am so grateful for both of you for stepping to the plate and helping Hawaii take their health back. And through politics, what a who would have thought they would have been in the same sentence? But you will bring healthy back to politics here in Hawaii. So I'm so grateful to both of you because this has been my heart for the last 20 years. And with your leadership, I know that Hawaii has a better chance of healing physically, mentally, financially, politically, spiritually, you name it, you guys are on track for this. But we've run out of time for today. Mahalo Kim and mahalo to Gary Cordery for making this great commitment to making Hawaii great again. We'll be back in two weeks with more of Taking Your Health Back. Aloha everyone and mahalo Kim and Gary. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.